This morning we kick off the uh, four-week series that we're calling All In with an invitation for us all to examine our life, kind of, whether it is in the, that spectrum of what would I do if I had 30 days to live or what would I do if I just woke up uh, this morning and decided to do life differently, more purposefully, more intentionally. Um, this has been a really kind of fun series to jump into because for me at least it... it It taps literally on the red door of my life. And uh, I don't know about you all, but every now and then I have this this moment when I think, uh, be bold, go and do, go and do more, go and do life differently. Um, I love the idea of that. How many of us don't love the idea of just like cutting loose and just going? Anybody in here, does anybody uh, else want to do that with me? Um, There is just something about that. And then I... um, Go over to Dairy Queen and I have a shake and I'm like, well, maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Maybe that's a really good idea, but I don't know. I got stuff today. I got stuff. Well, this morning we're going to talk about um, our stuff, putting our stuff aside, opening ourselves to the Holy Spirit and beginning, just beginning to uh, kind of crack that red door, to kind of imagine what it would be like to live all in. I am convinced that we all want to live all in. We love that idea. It's just how do we get from, from where we are to there? This week as I was looking for kind of a, a visual explanation of this, I remembered a couple years ago seeing the, the movie The Secret Life of Walter Mitty. How many of you all saw that? Well, if you didn't see it, you're going to want to see it after this little trailer. Uh, pay particular attention to, uh, there's just so many great layers in here. There's a great song that's playing. Uh, watch Walter and his face and his life, and then watch all of the background that happens behind him. And then we're going to start talking about what Walter has to do with Jesus after this. Check this out. Would you take the red one or the blue one? Red, hand, red raise your hand. Blue, raise your hand. Oh, that tells a lot about y'all. <laughs> Walter is a great example of an awakening, a moment in which he kind of uh, realized his life was not... All of that. Did you notice uh, Walter is um, probably a pretty good guy, wouldn't you say? Wakes up at a certain time, has everything. I loved how he had his breakfast. Just everything was in place. Everything was in place on his night sand. Um, did you notice as he was kind of running out of the building, what was he running in front of? Life and other people's lives. Amazing people who have made a huge difference. And uh, I wonder if that's not sometimes what we do. We run past other people's lives in an effort to make a difference, but we never really awaken to the difference that we can make. We look at other people and go, wow, they're, they're really all in. I like that. But then when it comes to our turn, we're like, hmm, I think I'll go to Dairy Queen. Well, this morning, I want you to think about um, your story. And when you hear an invitation to be all in, how does that land on your ears? I have a theory that we, we either hear that with a little bit of uh, negativity, resentment, whatever, like, don't tell me how to be all in, Meyer. You don't know all the other junk going on in my life. Don't even, don't even go there because I've got this and this and this. And I'm, I'm just really kind of happy that I woke up and that I found my shoes and that we got here. Isn't that in enough? Or we hear all in. We're like, yeah, I can't wait to be all in. I want to jump out of a helicopter into freezing cold water Mm, or not. But we are energized by that thought of being all in. I have, I think uh, that most of us live somewhere in between there and that most of the time it kind of does this. It just kind of vacillates. So this morning, we're going to back off all in just a little bit, and we're going to look for volunteers who want to be more in, okay? Establish in your mind where you are right now. Like if you're like right here, are you willing to be right here? Are you willing to at least entertain the idea of there is more room for you to be in than already right there at the helicopter about to jump out? This morning, we're going to look at the, what I'm going to call the fine print. If you have your Bible, open to Romans 12, 9 through 18, because it's really important as believers that we look at the fine print to find out, so um, 
how do we do, how do, we do this all in? It's um, obviously more than just the preacher standing up here and showing a, a video about going for it, right? Well, Paul gives us this great template of how to do life. And I want you to join me in reading it out loud. And then we're going to come back and uh, see how close we can get to this in our lives. So join me as we read together uh, Romans 12, 9 through about 18. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. So far, so good? Everybody all right with that? Okay, then let's press on. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. My friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God. Wow. That's a lot of stuff. Help us open our minds, our hearts, and our ears to hear your word and to have the courage to apply it to our lives. Amen. Well, it's an interesting template. It's a whole lot of words. I wonder how many of us, besides just saying it, were, were like attentive all the way through. Hanging on every thought, thinking, I can, I can do that. Yeah, I can probably do that. Well, I'm not so sure I can do that. Or did you tune out about halfway through going, well, this is just the craziest thing I've heard. There is no, there's no way I can do all that stuff. No one person, maybe Jesus, well, for sure Jesus, could do all of that. Sometimes when we hear really big lists of things to do, um, well, I'll, let me turn that around. When I hear really big, amazing Christian things to do that I don't really think I can do, I'm going to just confess to y'all, I kind of tune out because I'm like, I can't do all that, and I'm going to feel like crud because I can't do all that, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm just not going to read all that. How's that for a good old pastor? Uh, and then I feel convicted, and then I go back and read it, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. So here's what we're going to do this morning. We're going to, um, we're going to hear that in a couple of different versions. Because sometimes um, the Bible just sounds like the Bible and we don't pay close attention to it. Um, listen carefully to the New Living Translation. I'm not going to read it all. Don't just pretend to love others. Really love them. Hate what's wrong. Hold tightly to what is good. Another part in there, verse 13, says, When God's people are in need, be ready to help them. Always be eager to practice hospitality. Always be eager. Always be eager. Are we always eager? Or are we kind of like, yeah, I'll say hi if I want to, but I, I don't really feel like talking to anybody today. Um, don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. I love that line. Don't be too proud to enjoy the company of ordinary people. Friends, I have a news flash for us. No matter how big or special you think you are, you're ordinary. We're ordinary. We, we are ordinary people. So don't forget that. Do all that you can to live in peace with one another. All right. Hear it from now the Common English Bible. Consider everyone as equal and don't think that you're better than anyone. Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions, but show respect for what everyone else believes is good. Now, lastly, from the message. The message is kind of cuts right to it. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. And then this part about hospitality, I love this. It says, be inventive in hospitality. 
Think about that for a minute. You know, we talk a lot about being hospitable, showing radical hospitality, and we think that radical hospitality is just talking to a stranger and maybe then inviting them to sit with us, right? That we think, man, I'm a really friendly person. I went up and talked to a stranger. Uh, be inventive in hospitality. Think on that the rest of the afternoon. And then uh, for all of us, um, don't hit back. Don't hit back. How many of us were ever told that when we were little kids? Come on, really? Just some of us? So just yesterday, I was at a soccer match with my two uh, granddaughters, Audrey and Nora. And um, uh, Nora was playing. Well, she kind of played. She got dressed, but she really never went out on the field. And um, Audrey was sitting there. And Audrey's now played two seasons, so she was kind of the quasi-coach. And uh, was telling Nora what to go do. And, you know, that always works out well when your seven-year-old tells your four-year-old what to do. That four-year-old listened so attentively uh, that at one point she picked up her little umbrella because it was kind of raining and smacked her over the head with it. <laughs> it was just like out of the blue. Like, <laughs> and of course, then Audrey kicked Nora and then Nora kicked Audrey and the soccer game's going on and we're having our own little, like, kick fest right here. And... Uh, <laughs> Like, after about 10 hits, her, my, my daughter said, don't hit back. I'm like, that's, that's, it's too late. We've already been hitting back. That, that, that ship has sailed. How about quit hitting back? I mean, we all do that kind of, don't we? We hit back um, with our hands, with our words, uh, or, or our lack of words. I'll show her. I'm just going to not talk to her the rest of the day. That'll make her feel better. It'll sure make me feel better. We, we're... Sometimes we don't do life very well, people. All right. So here's what I want us to think about on this all in. I've come up with three new categories. Sort of in, mostly in, all in. Sort of in, some of the time. Mostly in, most of the time. All in, all of the time. Where, where do you think you are most of the time? Are you mostly in, some of the time? Some sort of in to me means like no, like just what sort of means, right? No extremes. It's kind of like just in the middle. It's like when you get your food at a restaurant, it's not hot and it's not cold. It's just, it's been sitting there for a while. You know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Or when you, the water's not hot, your coffee's not hot and it's not cold, it's just kind of, right, lukewarm. We know what Jesus said about lukewarm water, don't we? Mostly in. Are you a mostly in person? Mostly in is above average. So that, well, that's pretty good, right? Where, and when and where are you mostly in? Are you mostly in at home? You know, there's a lot of folks who say that we are the meanest to the people we love. So let's think about that for a minute. So are you really mostly in I'm willing to bet that we're mostly in with people we don't know because it's, ni- it's easier to be nice Christian people with strangers, really, because they don't know us and we're probably not going to hit them. And then um, all in. When, when is it that we're all, all in? And is that, is that, can we do that, really? I mean, is that like a Jesus and a Pope thing? I mean, can, can we be all in? And does all in mean we read that template and we're like, check. Got it, check, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I'm just not sure. So I asked God, I got permission to kind of consolidate the scripture down a little bit. And here's Doug's four rules. Love all people, like really, with no pretending. Think about what that would look like. And is, is there a catch word in that sentence? I think there is. Is it a... Love all people, comma, really, comma, no pretending. What's the key word in there? All. Dang it. All. I think, and I think all means all. I don't think we can have all with like an asterisk and then next to it, like, but except for none of those people. Uh, hold tight to what is good. Hang in there when the going gets hard and pray a lot. Hang in there. When the going gets hard, because it's going to go hard, right? 
The sun's going to come up and you're going to have a, a hard day. There's going to be hard days. Newsflash. Don't think that you're better than anyone, which a lot of times we do. We kind of do things that kind of make us, like we, we compare ourselves almost all the time to other people going, well, at least I'm not that bad. And so that, that kind of gives us this sense of this false esteem. Um, and so our good is only based on somebody else's bad. That's what we were thinking, isn't it? What if we just embraced good and we use this as our template for good? Help all people, even strangers. Help all people, even strangers. Be creative, as the text said, in our hospitality. We have kind of cast in our world nowadays out of this sense of fear that stranger, stranger danger, we even have little sayings that go with it, right? But all a stranger is is somebody you hadn't met yet. That's all that is. I mean, this room is full of a bunch of strangers. Like, these people, do y'all ever go over and meet those people over there? I mean, there's this great sea in between y'all. Y'all are pretty nice folks, aren't y'all? See, look at that. Wouldn't you want to be friends with them? They're nice. They're, I mean, there are some strangers over here. But y'all can be nice people, right? Have y'all ever met them over there? No. They're waving to y'all. There's a couple of rift drafts over here. <laughs> Tattooed, long-haired hippie types. <laughs> Can't even wear a long shirt. <laughs> My mama would get onto you. <laughs> See, we make up these things in our heads, don't we? We look at people and we go, "Can't be friends with him. He's a stranger. He's a scary stranger. He's got tattoos." <laughs> it would be, you know what? <laughs> Y'all, here's what would happen. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen until Jesus comes back. Uh, if I took off my shirt, y'all would be blinded by the light. And I'm really cut. I have a, I'm going to have a cut. All right, hey, Kevin, can you help me with my little prop over here? So if you have a piece of paper and a pen, you need to take it out right now. Because we're going to do, I came up with an uh, all-in scale. Can you help him get that up here? You know, deep down, I wanted to be a teacher when I grew up. You are handy. Thank you, Vanna. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's see. I guess we need to find the light. Where's the light? There it is. All right. Uh, We're going to have this morning the all-in scale. Because I think um, I'm I'm at least super practical. And I think that this all-in, more-in, sort of-in is... um, a waste of our breath if all we do is go to church, we talk about, hey, I'm going to be all in, and then we go home and we're all out, right? So from the scriptures we read, I've come up with these categories, attitude, action, praying, giving, serving, helping, and what I'm calling enemy love. As I read that now, that sounds kind of weird, but love your enemy. Attitude, action, praying, giving, serving, enemy love. And so here's our scale. Y'all have paper out? Are y'all doing this? Come on, I'm serious. Uh, so if you're not doing that very good, we're going to give ourselves a percentage grade. It goes from zero to 100%. And uh, so all we're doing is right now getting a snapshot of how we're doing. This morning, I woke up. I had a pretty good attitude. I woke up. I slept good. Uh, I, so I, I kind of shot high. I gave myself a 79. Uh, but I hadn't really done much of anything other than wake up. So I just gave myself a 50 for action. Patrick, you're not doing this. Patrick, you need to be doing this. Uh, praying, I do pretty good on that, but not as good as I should. So I gave myself a 45. Nate, are you taking score? Are you writing down your score? All right, man. Uh, giving, I'm fair with that. Not as probably as I, good as I should be. Uh, serving, helping. I'm pretty good with that, but I was kind of starting to get intimidated by this because I thought, oh, I'm going to have a bad score, and they're going to think less of me. Uh, enemy love, I, yeah, I'm going to give myself a 61. So here's how this works. Uh, they still teach uh, arithmetic, right? I don't know this new math where you carry one and you carry the other, and then how long did a train take to get to Chicago and all that. So I added mine up this morning, and... Uh, This is my all-in score. 
Huh? Uh huh. I'm. I am. I am mostly. I am mostly in, but trending up. Right? If you're from the if you're from the midline over, I'm trending up, folks. Uh, so, where are y'all? You big talkers. Where are y'all? Uh, I actually think. Of course, this kind of just started as like a little preacher gimmick, but. Um, I think if every day we did a little all-in assessment, it would be an interesting uh, experience to see where we are. There's going to be some days you just bottom out, right? I mean, you, you blow any one of these numbers and your average is just going to bottom out, right? Like fall, fail in a class. All of a sudden that just goes kaboom. But what if, what if I said to me and to y'all, all right, so I'm not content with 56.4 that... Um, What's it going to take for me to move that to a 60? I think I'm going to start with probably uh, my 45 and see if I can't get that number up a little bit. If you had to evaluate your all-in scale, which, where would you start? Would you start at the hardest one or the easiest one? I think that there is... a uh, some wisdom in assessing our all inness every day versus reading the scripture and going, I like that idea, but I can never do that, so I'm not even going to try. What if every day we held ourselves literally to a measurement and said, um, I think I can do this and I think I can do this better? If after a while your behavior started changing, praise the Lord right? Who, who here is willing to try this for the next couple of weeks with me? I think uh, this could be scary awesome. If we, for all of you who are number cruncher kind of people, I think that there is some real, um, some wisdom in this. And I would invite you to, throughout the All In series, let's, um, let's hold ourselves to this and hold ourselves accountable. I know as a people, that's not something that we race towards. But what if we had at least one other person who we checked in with every day and said, hey, how are you doing on this all-in thing? How, how are you doing? How are you doing? Let's pray. Holy God, we, uh, we confess that most of the time we're sort of in, but we really want to aspire to be from mostly in trending to all-in. We hear your word and uh, we are amazed by it intimidated, scared of it, but know that there is truth in it for all of us. God, help us today to make one step towards you, one step towards loving more, caring more, sharing more, and not hitting. In your name we pray. Amen. You know, last week uh, was the uh, kind of the pinnacle, I guess, of our Commitment Sunday for our Unshackled uh, campaign. And I've got some pretty cool news to share to that end. For those of you who, who aren't familiar with Unshackled, I don't imagine how you could be, uh, but uh, Unshackled is a campaign that we've been going through here at Treach to try to get rid of as much debt as we can because that's just a great thing to do and it's going to free up resources for us to do a whole lot more. Well, as of this morning, we've raised $3 million. Wow. Yeah. That, uh, that's because you guys are super amazing generous. And, uh, you know, we really, we're going to be, uh, we're going to stretch for 3.5. Every, every dollar we pay off frees up more dollars to do things like more loving, caring, being more all in. Uh, next Sunday is the thing they call First Fruits, which is our effort to give to God the highest percentage of what we can of that so that we can go ahead and make a great big payment off of our debt. So um, if you're thinking about that and praying about that, uh, need to talk about that, holler at me, any of the pastors. There's a cool website you can go to uh, off the Treach website to learn more about that. And uh, you're going to get a little treat because y'all were good in church today. When you go out the doors, I won't tell you anymore because it will ruin the surprise. But uh, thank you for all you do. Let's pray. Holy God, thank you for uh, just 
the amazing, awesome way that it, you have stirred within us uh, generosity and giving and helped us all to see how much more we can do in your kingdom by getting rid of the chains that hold us back. In your name, amen.